Hello everybody, welcome to the channel SRS. This is Sumit Roy and we are studying today VLSI design, VHDL and delays in VHDL. So let us start. Uh, first of all delays, uh, there are two types of, basically there are two types of delays. Uh, inertial delay and transport delay. We will deal with simulation and delta delays later. So there are two types of delays, inertial delay and transport delay. Uh, inertial delay is actually default delay of VHDM and this is not a default delay. Uh, so I will concentrate first on inertial delay. So as it is a default delay, I will start with an example. Uh, let us say a buffer. A buffer is that is having a 20 nanoseconds delay. A and B. Uh, so it's just a simple buffer and uh, whatever is the input, the same is the output but uh, transferred after 20 nanoseconds. Uh, so if I will take an example uh, that is let A be 0 nanosecond, 10 nanosecond, 20 nanosecond and uh, let it be 30 nanosecond and an event occurs 40 nanosecond, 50 nanosecond and so on and uh, as it is an inertial or default delay the output beta or b will be uh, that is 0 whatever is at the minus 20 nanosecond it will be transferred here whatever is at the minus 10 second it will be transferred here at 10 nanosecond at 20 nanosecond whatever is the uh, available here it will be transferred because what is the input it's same as the output but after 20 nanoseconds this is obviously nanoseconds so now at when we are standing at 30 nanoseconds so it is transferred here, it is 30 nanosecond, when we are at 30, 40 nanosecond, so it will be transferred from here, that is 40 nanoseconds, but when we are at 50 nanoseconds, this is important, when we are at 50 nanoseconds, the 30th nanosecond will be transferred here, but the event will not occur because what happens is at 40 nanoseconds again the same thing will, will occur at 60 nanoseconds. What is happening is this this is known as swallowing of pulse. What is happening is actually what is happening is uh, at 30 nanosecond it is output is f at uh, 10 nanosecond whatever it is 10 nanosecond it is at the 30 nanosecond but an event is registered. Okay, it is registered um, as it is a default uh, uh, setting, it is at uh, default delay, so uh, it does not have any memory location to save this event, that an event has already occurred at 30 nanosecond. But when we approach 40 nanosecond, another event occurs, means overlapping of the event occurs. That is from 0 to 1, an event is occurring at 30 nanosecond it has to be first executed before another event to occur. Now it is not executed because it will be executed at 50 nanoseconds. But before 50 nanoseconds only another event is occurring that is from 1 to 0. That is the event is overlapping. The second event is overlapping. The first event has not at all been executed and a second event is occurring. That it is it has been overlapped over the first event. So the first event actually never happens, never occurs at the output. And uh, the for, at 40 nanosecond it will be captured at 60 nanosecond that is from 1 to 0. So it has never, means finally it is reaching 0 so it will continue to remain 0. Now if, if something changes that is in the same diagram if I change something that is if I increase this event size by say 30 nanoseconds. This is 40 nanoseconds, 
This is 50 nanoseconds and this is 60 nanoseconds. This will be 70. So now what will happen is 0 will be formed at 20, 10 will be formed at 30, this will be 20 and this will be 30. Now only one event has occurred 0 to 1 and here 1 to 1, no event, 1 to 1, no event at 40 and at also at 50. So the event has not at all overlapped. So only one event that is from 0 to 1 has occurred and it will be executed at after 20 nanoseconds that is 30 so 50 so it will be executed and again this will be at 40 this will be at 50 this is actually 60 of 40 this will be 70 of 50 and then Actually, another event has occurred here, 1, 2, 0 at 60. So, first event has already been executed. So, now that this is only the case for the second event. At 80, the event will again occur. That is 1, 2, 0. And 90. So, the verdict of this, uh, uh, this inertial delay is, if the events are there then if there are two events then the event should be separated at least more than the this inertial delay or else the output will get overlapped that is one event will be second event will be overlapped with over this first one so that is if the gap between the two events is such that the first event is executed then the second event occurs then obviously it will be executed this is what is inertial delay or default delay of VSDL. Now we will consider for transport delay. Uh, so it is not a default delay. So in the programming itself, we will consider transport delay. So if I will write the programming for uh, considering inertial delay and considering transport delay, the difference can be uh, seen. That is for inertial delay, if I will write for inertial delay, Library IEEE use IEEE dot standard underscore logic underscore one one six four dot all then entity buffer is port A in standard underscore logic B out standard underscore logic end entity that is buffer for architecture A underscore BUF of BUF is begin as we are considering inertial delay, so we will write B A after 20 nanoseconds and A underscore buffer. As it is an inertial delay, as it is a default delay, so it is directly written as transfer A into beta into B after 20 nanoseconds. This is it. Now if we consider transport delay, a simple uh, change is considered. Transport delay, it is not a default delay. So what I have to write is transport A after 20 nanoseconds. What is the difference is it is not uh, that it, the compulsion vanishes here that is it is not we have to we do not have to wait for two uh, events to occur after 20 nanoseconds has elapsed. It can be what 10 nanoseconds it can be 5 nanoseconds it does not matter. So in transport delay it is not a default delay so the events can occur uh, immediately after what 5, 7, 10 nanoseconds. 
it does not have to wait for one event to be executed and then the second event to occur. Okay. So this is basic delays. Now we'll consider simulation delays and delta delay in the next class, in the next chapter. Till then, goodbye. Consider subscribing.